the previous lecture i have introduced some special discrete distributions and uh, in fact uh, three of the distributions were related to the bernoullian trials that is uh, binomial distribution geometric and negative binomial distributions then i introduced a concept of poisson process and uh, the distribution is obtained through a limiting process uh, by setting up the differential equations uh, now i will introduce certain uh, special continuous distributions the first one of them is known as the exponential or negative exponential distribution so let us uh, go back to our earlier discussion i have introduced a poisson process so let us consider now if you remember the poisson process we had a parameter called alpha there which was actually the constant of proportionality that means we said that probability of a single occurrence during a small time interval is proportional to the length of the time interval so we wrote that if the interval is of length h then the probability of one occurrence in that interval is equal to something like alpha h so this alpha is the constant of proportionality that is called the rate of the poisson process or the rate of or arrival or rate of occurrence in a poisson process so consider a poisson process with rate say alpha okay now of course this alpha has to be positive let us consider let x Uh, sorry x we have already used a notation for the number of occurrences so let us use another notation let y be the time till the first occurrence so starting from time 0 that means we start observing a poisson process and we wait till the first occurrence is observed and we denote so this is a poisson process here we this is a time 0 and this is the time y where the first occurrence has occurred that means between 0 to y there is no occurrence now naturally this y is different than the number of occurrences the number of occurrences is a discrete random variable because it was taking values 0 1 2 and so on now we are looking at the time so y is the continuous random variable now let us find out the distribution of what is the distribution of y so let us look at say probability of y greater than say small y that is equal to probability of x y is equal to 0 because if y is greater than y that means there is no occurrence in the interval 0 to y which is equivalent to x y is equal to 0 now what is the distribution of x y that is the poisson distribution with parameter alpha y so this is becoming e to the power minus alpha y of course this is for y greater than 0 if y is less than 0 then this will be equal to 1 so if we consider the cumulative distribution function of y that is 1 minus probability y greater than y then it is equal to 0 for y less than or equal to 0 it is equal to 1 minus e to the power minus alpha y for y greater than 0 now in the case of continuous random variable if we differentiate the cumulative distribution function we will get the probability density function so we get differentiating capital f with respect to y we get the probability density function of y so that is equal to then f y y is equal to alpha e to the power minus alpha y for y greater than 0 it is 0 for y less than or equal to 
So, this is called the exponential and since there is exponent as a negative term, this is actually called a negative exponential distribution. The moment structure of this is quite simple. If we can write down mu k prime that is expectation of y to the power k that is equal to y to the power k alpha e to the power minus alpha y d y from 0 to infinity. Now, this is nothing but a gamma function. So, the value is simply equal to k factorial divided by alpha to the power k for k equal to 1, 2 and so on. So, we get the mean that is equal to 1 by alpha. Let us look at the physical interpretation of this. If the Poisson process has the arrival rate alpha that is the rate of occurrence is alpha, then the waiting time for the first occurrence is 1 by alpha. So, it is something like saying that you can say rate is 1 in 3 minutes. So, the waiting time then will be 3 minutes for the first occurrence, the expected waiting time. Let us consider say mu 2 prime, then that will become 2 by l phi square and therefore, variance of y that will be equal to 2 by l phi square minus 1 by l phi square that is equal to 1 by l phi square. So, in the case of exponential distribution, the variance is square of the mean. One may also calculate, of course, plotting of this distribution is very simple because alpha e to the power minus alpha y at y is equal to 0, the value is equal to alpha and thereafter because e to the power minus alpha y is a decreasing function. So, it will decrease. So, this is the naturally you can see this is a skewed distribution, positively skewed distribution. We can actually calculate mu 3 that is 2 by alpha cube and mu 4 is equal to 9 by alpha to the power 4. So, the measure of skewness that is equal to 2 by alpha cube divided by 1 by alpha cube that is equal to 2 which is positive. So, it is always positively skewed. In fact, this is free from the parameter alpha. Similarly, if you look at beta 2 that is the measure of kurtosis 9 by alpha to the power 4 divided by 1 by alpha to the power 4 minus 3 that is equal to 6 that is also positive. So, the peak is higher than the normal peak that we are having for the exponential distribution. Now, like the geometric distribution, this exponential distribution is also having a property which is called the memoryless property of the exponential distribution. Memoryless property of exponential distribution. Let us consider say probability of y greater than say s plus t. Then naturally this is equal to e to the power minus alpha s plus t. If we consider probability of y greater than s plus t given y is greater than say t that is equal to probability of y greater than s plus t intersection y greater than t divided by probability y greater than t that is equal to probability of y greater than s plus t divided by probability y greater than t because in the numerator this event is a subset of this event. Now, according to the formula that we have, it will be equal to e to the power minus alpha s plus t divided by e to the power minus alpha t that is equal to e to the power minus alpha t alpha s. Now, this is nothing but probability of y greater than s. So, what we have proved that probability of y greater than s is same as probability of y greater than s plus t given y is equal to greater than t. Now, the right hand side denotes that the waiting time is more than s that means, starting from time 0 that means, when we are starting to observe the Poisson process, the probability 
of first occurrence not being there till time s. And this one if you look at this is starting from time t because till time t the first occurrence is not there. What is the probability that we need additional s time because we it is going up to s plus t. It is the same as starting from 0 that means the starting point does not matter. This is called the memoryless property of the exponential distribution. We also calculate the moment generating function of the exponential distribution here. It is e to the power t y e to the power that will become alpha by alpha minus t for t less than alpha. Many times in the Poisson process, we do not start from the time 0, rather we start from a non-negative time alpha or time a for example. Now, this is something like uh, suppose we are considering any process or say a machine is working and we are looking for the failure that is when the system will fail. Now, the system may fail at any time. However, at many times the there is a hidden guarantee given that it will not fail before a given time say 1 hour, it will not fail before 1 month or it will not fail before 1 year. When we purchase a product there is a guarantee given there and therefore, the distribution point will be starting after that. So, this is known as a shifted exponential distribution. shifted exponential distribution. So, here we can write the distribution as say I am writing a more general form 1 by sigma e to the power x uh, y minus mu by sigma where y is greater than mu and here of course, sigma is positive. So, whatever moments of uh, y we were there the same thing will be true for ex moments of y minus mu. That means, in general we will have expectation of y minus mu to the power k equal to k factorial into sigma to the power k. So, for example, expectation of y will become mu plus sigma, variance will become twice sigma square. Let me give an example of uh, exponential distribution here. A small industrial unit has 20 machines whose life times are independent exponentially distributed with mean 100 months. If all machines are under use at a time, find the probability that even after 200 months at least two machines are working. So, let us consider say x is the life 
in months of a machine. Okay. Then it is given that x follows exponential distribution with parameter that is mean is uh, so here alpha is equal to 1 by 100 that is mean is 100 because in the exponential distribution the mean was 1 by alpha. So, alpha is equal to 1 by 100 because the mean is 100 here. So, what is the probability that machine is working up to after 200 months? So, it is probability x greater than 200. So, in the exponential distribution we have seen it is equal to e to the power minus alpha y. So, it is equal to e to the power minus 200 by 100 that is equal to e to the power minus 2. Now, let us define another random variable y is the number of machines working after 200 months. Then y will follow binomial 20 e to the power minus 2. So, we want that at least two machines are working. So, probability y greater than or equal to that is equal to 1 minus probability y is equal to 0 and probability y is equal to 1. So, based on this binomial distribution we can evaluate it, it turns out to be 0 0.7746. Because this is equal to actually 20 c 0 e to the power minus 2 to the power 0 actually 1 minus e to the power minus 2 to the power 20 minus 20 c 1 e to the power minus 2 1 minus e to the power minus 2 to the power 19. So, after evaluation this value turns out to be this. Now, in a Poisson process in place of the first occurrence we observe rth occurrence. Once again it is a generalization like in the uh, Bernoullian trials in place of the first success we looked at the first time rth success is observed. So, in a similar way suppose in a Poisson process with rate lambda uh, rate alpha let say z denote the time till the rth occurrence. Then we want the distribution of z. What is the distribution of z? So, we again consider in the similar way as probability z greater than z that is equal to. Now, in a Poisson process see this is the time z till this time r occurrences have not occurred that is rth occurrence is af occurring after this. That means, within this portion not more than r minus 1 occurrences will take place. So, this is equal to probability of x z less than or equal to r minus 1. So, this is equal to e to the power minus alpha z alpha z to the power j by j factorial summation j is equal to 0 to r minus 1. Of course, here z has to be positive. If z is negative, then this probability is going to be 1. So, the cumulative distribution function of z then turns out to be 0 for z less than or equal to 0. It is equal to 1 minus sigma j is equal to 0 to r minus 1 e to the power minus alpha z alpha z to the power j by j factorial for z greater than 0. So, if we differentiate this uh, cumulative distribution function, we will get the probability density function of the uh, this random variable z. So, differentiating capital F with respect to z, we get the p d f of z as f z. Now, you look at this terms here. This contains r terms. 
and each term has a product e to the power minus alpha z alpha z to the power j. So, when you differentiate you will get two terms at each time. So, we write it in a sequential fashion. So, it is equal to 1 minus d by d z e to the power minus alpha z plus alpha z into e to the power minus alpha z plus alpha z square by 2 factorial e to the power minus alpha z and so on plus alpha z to the power r minus 1 e to the power minus alpha z by r minus 1 factorial. So, this is equal to 1 minus now if we differentiate this we get minus alpha e to the power minus alpha z. If we differentiate this one the first term if I differentiate I will get alpha. So, I get plus alpha e to the power minus alpha z and notice here that this term is same as this term and they cancel out. When you differentiate this you will get minus alpha square z e to the power minus alpha z. Here you get alpha square z square. So, when you differentiate you will get twice and this twice will cancel with this. So, you will get plus alpha square z e to the power minus alpha z. Once again notice that this term and this term are the same with different signs. So, they will get cancel out. So, like that all the successive terms will cancel out each other and we will be left with the last term that is equal to minus alpha to the power r z to the power r minus 1 e to the power minus alpha z by r minus 1 factorial. So, this is equal to alpha r divided by r minus 1 factorial which we write as gamma r e to the power minus alpha z z to the power r minus 1 here z is positive. This is known as Erlang or gamma distribution. So, a gamma distribution has been derived as the waiting time till the rth occurrence in a Poisson process. If you notice the integral of this because it is a gamma function it will become 1, but you notice here that when we have derived this distribution I have considered r to be an integer, but even if r is any positive real number this distributional form is valid. Therefore, a generalized form of the gamma distribution will be when r is any positive real number here. Now, the moment structure of the uh, gamma distribution is quite uh, simple because it will use the uh, moments uh, the gamma function here. Let me give the expressions for the moment structure here we will have expectation of z to the power k as equal to r into r plus 1 and so on up to r plus k minus 1 divided by alpha to the power k. Expectation of z then turns out to be r by alpha variance of z will be equal to r by alpha square and in general it is a positively skewed distribution. The moment generating function of z will be equal to alpha by alpha minus t to the power r for t less than alpha. Notice here the moment generating function of the exponential distribution was alpha by alpha minus t and this is power r. So, that immediately suggests that the sum of independent exponential variables will be gamma. Let me write this additive property that let x 1 x 2 x r be i i d exponential alpha variables then sigma x i i is equal to 1 to r that is equal to y that will follow a gamma distribution with parameters r and alpha. Once again this can be explained in a physical setting x 1 can be considered as the waiting time for the first occurrence in a Poisson process x 2 can be observed as a number of first occurrence in a Poisson process. X r can be considered as the waiting time for the first occurrence in a Poisson process. Now, if you consider x 1 plus x 2 plus x r then you are looking at the time between 0 to t. So, it will become the first time rth occurrence in a Poisson process and uh, therefore, this will become simply the gamma distribution. So, that is also confirmed by the MGF approach or the moment generating function calculations that one can do here.
let me give a example here the time to failure of a certain system has a gamma distribution with a mean of 20 days and standard deviation 10 days. Find the probability of a failure within 15 days of the start of operations. So, here we are having r by alpha that is equal to 20 because mean of a gamma distribution is r by alpha. The variance is 100, variance of a gamma is r by alpha square that is 100. So, if I take the ratio here, I get here alpha is equal to this implies alpha is equal to 1 by 5 and r will be equal to 4. So, the distribution of this random variable will become alpha to the power r that is 1 by 5 to the power 4 gamma 4 e to the power minus x by 5 x to the power 4 minus 1 that is 3 for x greater than 0. So, this is the distribution here. We wanted the probability of the system failing within 15 days. So, that is equal to 1 minus probability x greater than 15 that is equal to 1 minus integral 15 to infinity 1 by 5 Now, in this one we can substitute x by 5 is equal to say y, then it will give 1 minus 3 to infinity e to the power minus y, y cube and 1 by gamma 4 dy. Now, this can be evaluated using integration by parts, actually it is an incomplete gamma function and the value turns out to be 0.3528. Now, this also suggests that if alpha is common, the gamma distributions also add to another gamma variable. Suppose, we have gamma r 1 alpha and gamma r 2 alpha independent variables, then if we add them, then that will be having gamma r 1 plus r 2 alpha. Now, we proceed to another important distribution that is the normal distribution. a continuous random variable x is said to have a normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma square if it has probability density function given by 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu square. Here x is any real number, mu is any real number and sigma is a positive real number. Now, first of all let us look at the properties of this distribution and then I will explain how the distribution is obtained in the physical situations.
let us firstly consider whether it is a valid probability density function. So, we have 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu square d x. Let us substitute x minus mu by sigma is equal to say z that is 1 by sigma d x is equal to d z. This is from minus infinity to infinity. When the range of x is from minus infinity to infinity, sigma is positive therefore, z will also vary from minus infinity to infinity. So, this will become equal to minus infinity to infinity 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 dz. Now, notice here this function is an even function and this integral is a convergent improper integral. So, this becomes 2 times 0 to infinity 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 dz. Now, in this region I can make a substitution z square by 2 is equal to say t that is z is equal to 2 t to the power half or d z is equal to 1 by root 2 t d t. So, this integral then turns out to be twice integral 0 to infinity 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus t 1 by root 2 t d t. Now, this you simplify this is turning out to be simply 1 by root pi 0 to infinity t to the power half minus 1 e to the power minus t d t. This is nothing but gamma half. Now, gamma half is root pi. So, this cancels out you get 1. So, this is a valid probability density function. Now, what I have also described during this process is a procedure for solving the integrals which involve this probability density function of this form. So, we generally make this kind of transformations that is x minus mu by sigma is equal to z and z square by 2 is equal to t. Now, let me give you the moment structure of the normal distribution. <coughs> let us consider expectation of say x minus mu to the power say r, then that is equal to integral of <coughs> x minus mu to the power r 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu square d x. Now, I will not be considering this transformation again and again, I will be just substituting this value that is x minus mu by sigma is equal to z and uh, 1 by sigma d x equal to d z and then z square by 2 is equal to t. So, if we carry out this transformation, this will become sigma to the power r by root 2 pi because x minus mu by sigma is equal to z. So, x minus mu is equal to sigma z. So, this becomes sigma to the power r z to the power r e to the power minus z square by 2 d z minus infinity to infinity. Immediately, you can notice here that whenever r is an odd integer this value is going to be 0. So, if r is equal to of the form 2 m plus 1 for m is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on, then I will get expectation of x minus mu to the power 2 m plus 1 is equal to 0. That means, in particular if I write m is equal to 0, I get expectation of x minus mu is equal to 0. That means, expectation of x is equal to mu. That means, mu is denoting the mean of the normal distribution. That is the parameter which I specified as mu while defining the normal distribution is actually the mean of this distribution. And therefore, this expression represents central moments. So, what we have proved that all odd ordered central moments of a normal distribution vanish. Now, when r is equal to of the form 2 m, then this expression can be simplified as say sigma to the power 2 m. So, now then this expression becomes simply mu of 2 m because it is the 
टू एम एच सेंट्रल मूवमेंट रूट टू पाई माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू इन्फिनिटी जेड टू दी पावर टू एम ई टू दी पावर माइनस जेड स्क्वायर बाई टू डी जेड नाउ यू नोटिस दैट दिस इज एन इवेंट फंक्शन सो यू कैन मेक इट टू टाइम्स दिस टर्म एंड देन अगेन सब्सटीट्यूट जेड स्क्वायर बाई टू टर्म एंड आफ्टर सिंप्लीफिकेशन दिस टर्म विल बी इवेल्युएटेड एज इक्वल टू ट्वाइस एम माइनस वन ट्वाइस एम माइनस थ्री एंड सो ऑन फाइव थ्री वन सिग्मा टू दी पावर टू एम इन पर्टिकुलर इफ आई सब्सटीट्यूट एम इज इक्वल टू वन दैट इज म्यू टू दैट इज वेरियंस ऑफ एक्स दैट विल बी इक्वल टू सिग्मा स्क्वायर सो वंस अगेन वी स्पेसिफाई द पैरामीटर ऑफ द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिग्मा स्क्वायर इज डिनोटिंग एक्चुअली इट्स वेरियंस so the parameters mu and sigma square which we use for specifying the probability density function are actually the mean and variance in the case of normal distribution now we can also calculate mu 4 mu 4 will become equal to 3 sigma to the power 4 now let us look at the measures of skewness and kurtosis so certainly since odd ordered moments are zero mu 3 is zero so beta 1 is zero and beta 2 is also equal to 0 because it is 3 sigma to the power 4 divided by sigma to the power 4 minus 3 in when we de defined the measure of kurtosis or peakedness we defined it as the mu 4 by mu 2 square minus 3 so for the normal distribution the peak is called normal peak so if you plot the distribution it's a symmetric curve around mu the median is also mu the mode is also mu because the highest value is also attained at this point and it is perfectly symmetric around this point let us look at the moment generating function of this distribution so that is equal to minus infinity to infinity e to the power tx and then 1 by sigma root 2 pi e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu square dx now this tx term i can adjust with this and uh, after adjustment this can be simplified then this turns out to be e to the power mu t plus half sigma square t square now using this one can prove the linearity property of a normal distribution that if i say y follows ax plus b then let us consider the moment generating function of y then it is equal to e to the power bt and moment generating function of x at at so it becomes e to the power bt e to the power a mu t plus half a square sigma square t square that is equal to e to the power a mu plus b into t plus half sigma square a square t square so this is nothing but the moment generating function of a normal distribution with mean a mu plus b and variance a square sigma square this proves the linearity property of the normal distribution linearity property of normal distribution in fact this linearity property of normal distribution is valid for several normal distributions also if i say that say x1 x2 xn are independent and say xi follows normal with mean mu i and variance sigma i square then if i consider sigma a i x i plus b i i is equal to 1 to n then that will again have a normal distribution with mean a i mu i plus b i and variance sigma a i square sigma i square so and this type of property is true for the normal distribution now let us consider this if x follows normal mu sigma square then by 
linearity property if I consider x minus mu by sigma then that will follow normal 0 1. This is called standard normal distribution. This is called standard normal distribution. So, the probability density function of standard normal distribution is phi z, we use this notation 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus z square pi 2. Naturally, you have phi of minus z is equal to phi of z and the cumulative distribution function, the cumulative distribution function of standard normal distribution that is denoted by capital phi of z that is equal to minus infinity to z small phi z small phi t dt and you have phi of minus z is equal to 1 minus phi of z for all z. So, this is say a small phi of z it achieves maximum at 0 it is symmetric. So, at say minus a and plus a and if I consider the probability up to this point, this is same as the probability up to this point beyond this point. So, in any region symmetric region around 0, suppose I consider minus a to minus b and here a to b, then they will also be same. So, if I consider say the CDF of x that is the probability of x less than or equal to small x then that is equal to probability of x minus mu by sigma less than or equal to small x minus mu by sigma. Now, this is nothing but z. So, this is becoming z less than or equal to x minus mu by sigma. So, that is equal to phi of x minus mu by sigma. Therefore, any probability statement of a general normal distribution can be evaluated in terms of the cumulative distribution function of a standard normal random variable. The tables of uh, uh, standard normal distribution are widely available in almost all the textbooks and also the statistical uh, books of statistical tables. The tables of standard normal distribution have been given. Let me explain through some examples here. So, this is the 0, this is your z, this is phi of z. If we consider say minus 3 to 3, minus 2 to 2 and minus 1 to 1, let us consider these 3 points. And uh, <coughs> we can see here that what is the probability of modulus z less than or equal to 3 that is equal to phi of 3 minus phi of minus 3 that is twice phi of 3 minus 1 that is equal to 0 0.9974 because if you look at phi of 3 then from the tables of the normal distribution I will demonstrate here. This is the table of standard normal distribution here. So, on this side they are showing z and on this side phi z is tabulated here. So, if you see 3 corresponding to 3 the value is 0.9987. So, if you see this twice into 0.9987 minus 1 this is equal to 0.9974. That means, 99.74 percent of probability lies between minus 3 to 3. If we convert this uh, to a general normal distribution, this will translate to the statement that in a general normal distribution, 
99.74 percent of observations lie in mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma. So, these were called 3 sigma limits. Okay. Similarly, if we consider modulus z less than or equal to 2, then that is twice phi 2 minus 1 and phi 2 if we see from the tables of the normal distribution it is 0 0.9772. So, this is equal to twice into 0 0.9772 minus 1 that is equal to that is 95.44 percent of the observations lie in minus 2 to 2 or mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus 2 sigma. Similarly, if I look at z less than or equal to 1 twice phi 1 minus 1 that is equal to twice 0 0.8413 minus 1 that is equal to that is 68.26 percent of the probability lies in mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma. So, the normal distribution is heavily concentrated near the mean. Let me do one example here. the specifications for the diameter of the upper end of chalk pieces are set as 3.0 plus minus 0 0.01 centimeter the diameter has a normal distribution with mean 3 centimeter and standard deviation 0 0.005 centimeter. What proportion of chalk pieces will be declared? defective. So, the proportion that will be declared defective that will be given by that it is x is greater than 3.01 or x is less than 2.99 that is 1 minus probability 2.99 less than x less than 3.01. Now, this you can shift to standard normal here mu is equal to 3 and sigma is equal to 0 0.005. So, if you do this you will get twice minus twice here that is equal to 1 minus now, this probability we just now calculated that was equal to 0 0.9 that is equal to 0 0.5640. So, that is 4.56 percent defective items are there. Now, I give some limiting distributions. So, first result here is that if x follows a binomial n p distribution, if n goes to infinity, p goes to 0 such that n p is equal to lambda, then the distribution of x 
is approximated by Poisson lambda. Let us prove this. If we consider the distribution of uh, x and uh, that is binomial n p. So, let me consider the moment generating function it is equal to q plus p e to the power t whole to the power n. This we write as 1 minus p plus p e to the power t whole to the power n. You have n p is equal to lambda. So, we can write p is equal to lambda by n. So, this becomes 1 plus lambda by n e to the power t minus 1 whole to the power n. Here if I take the limit as n tends to infinity, this will go to e to the power lambda e to the power t minus 1, which is mgf of Poisson lambda distribution. This is as n tends to infinity. So, the distribution is approximated by Poisson lambda. I uh, will end up this by two important central limit theorems. One is let x follow binomial n p as n tends to infinity the distribution of z that is equal to x minus n p by root n p q is approximated by normal 0 1. The proof is you consider the moment generating function that is equal to q plus p to the power t to the power n that we can write as now consider the moment generating function of z. Now that is equal to expectation of e to the power t z. So if you substitute z is equal to this, this turns out to be e to the power minus root n p by q into t q plus p e to the power t by root n p q whole to the power n. Now, substitute q is equal to 1 minus p, this becomes e to the power minus root n p by q t and plus n log 1 plus p e to the power t by root n p q minus 1. Now, if n is large enough, then this number is going to be is small because t by that thing. So, and therefore, if that number is small, then this will be closer to uh, 0. That means, this number will be less than 1. So, we can consider logarithmic expansion in Taylor series. So, this can be written as e to the power minus root n p by q t plus n. Now, if you expand and apply the formula log 1 plus x is equal to x minus x square by 2 plus x cube by 3 and so on, then this term becomes p then uh, so and uh, moreover uh, this term will become p t by root n p q plus p t square by n p q two times minus p t cube by six root uh, it will be three n p q cube and so on. Mm, this will become minus e to the power x minus okay x minus x. So, this will become minus, this will become plus and so on. And uh, then you will have uh, yes, this will be 6. I have what I have done, I have expanded this first and then you consider minus half and then these terms is square plus and so on. 
that is equal to e to the power. Now, if you expand this, the first term root n p by q t, this term will cancel with this. You will get e to the power t square by 2 q, because if you consider this p p will cancel out and this n cancels out. So, you get t square by 2 q and here if you consider the square, you will get p square and uh, by p. So, that p will remain there and then one q is coming here. So, you get here 1 minus this minus t minus half t square by q into p. So, if I take common this is equal to e to the power and plus terms containing powers of 1 by root n. So, this will converge to e to the power t square by 2, because this term if you take common t square by q, 2 q, so it is becoming 1 minus p that is q, q q cancels out, so you get e to the power t square by 2, which is m g f of normal 0 1 distribution. That means, if n is large, then binomial distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution after proper standardization. Uh, Second central limit theorem, because we have given that binomial distribution also approximates to Poisson. So, there is another one which is called let x follow Poisson lambda. Then, as lambda tends to infinity, the distribution of z is equal to x minus lambda by root lambda is approximated by normal 0. These are called de Maivre Laplace central limit theorems. Actually, the first derivation of the normal distribution was through these limiting approaches only. And then later on it was observed using central limit theorem that if we are considering sums of any independent and identically distributed random variables, then their distributions are approximate. The distribution of the sum as n becomes large becomes approximately normal distribution. So, uh, these and other results we will be taking up in the uh, next class and plus we will be discussing certain sampling distributions. That means, when we are dealing with several random variables, then what do we talk about?